You are most welcome, my students of economics, senior five, Namgong Secondary and Vocational School. This is teacher Yakova James, your teacher, going to handle a topic of inflation. Before we look at our topic, I want us to look at the objectives or what we intend to achieve during this session. One, I want you to be able to define the term inflation. Two, by the end of the lesson, I want you to be able to compute and measure inflation. And then three, I want you to be able to explain the causes or theories of inflation. Now, we are going to look at the definition of the term inflation. Inflation refers to the persistent increase in the general price level of goods and services over a given period of time. I want to give some illustrations here when they talk about persistent increase in the general price level. If prices increase, for example, of sugar from 1,000 to 2,000, this is what we are defining to as inflation. It has lost value, money has lost value, and the figure has been increased by one more thousand. So, if the prices for goods and services increase beyond what people expect, then we say that inflation has set in. Now, we want to go ahead and look at the measurement of inflation. Basically, there are two methods we can use to compute inflation. One of the methods that we shall use to compute inflation is the use of price index. Use of price index is one of the methods we can use to compute inflation. How do we compute it? We have a uh, look at what we call the current price. We look at what we call the current price and look at what we call the best price. These are two things that we shall use to compute. What we call the current price, current, uh, which we shall call current price year in index, current price year index, and then base year best price year index those are the two things that we shall use to compute uh, the rate of inflation now we shall represent these words with certain abbreviations we shall represent price current price with pt and then the base year price with pt minus one so we shall have our formula as pt minus pt minus one over the current base year price pt minus one times a hundred this is the formula we use when you are looking at the price index method of computing inflation I want to give an illustration here. Assuming our PT, which is our current price here index, is 2,500, and the base year price index, which we are referring to as PT minus 1, as 2,000. What is the rate of inflation? So we shall substitute in our formula 
PT representing to be represented by 2500 and PT minus 1 be represented by 2000 over 2000 times 100. So we shall cancel this with that, this with that. Then we shall also subtract 2000 from 2500, which will be 500 over 20. Now we shall cancel this zero with that one, and then we shall divide 50 by 2, which will give us 20. 5%. That will be the rate of inflation. That is method 1. Method 2, we shall use what we call the GDP. GDP of current year over GDP of base year times 100. Still, when they give you the value for GDP of the current year, and they give you the GDP of the base year times 100, you will get what we call the rate of inflation. Now, GDP of the current year, that is the amount of money, that the amount of income that the country has accumulated over that year. Over the GDP of the previous year, base year, we call it the previous year. So when you compute what was there last year and then multiply that by 100, you also get the rate of inflation. If you don't want to use that, you can use nominal GDP over real GDP times 100. All the computations, you get the same answer. You get the same rate of inflation. So now, we can now define the term inflationary rate. What is an inflationary rate? For example, what is this rate here that we have computed here? An inflationary rate is the percentage increase in the general price level. For example, according to this, the prices have been increasing at a rate of 25. So, that rate which you have got is what we call an inflationary rate. An inflation rate refers to the percentage increase in the general price level. But what you should note, this is not a constant that the prices keep on increasing by 25%. It varies from time to what? To time. So, this year we may have 25, another we may have 20, another we may have 10, depending on the nature of or the rate of inflation on a particular period of time. So that's what we call the rate of inflation. Now we want also to go ahead and look at the state of inflation. When we are looking at the state of inflation, here we are referring almost the methods, the types, the forms of inflation. So rate or state of inflation is the speed at which the general price level is increasing in the economy. It can be categorized in different ways, as we shall see. So that's what we call the state. So the state can either be high or it can be low. So the rate at which inflation increases is what we call, or the rate at which inflation increases is what we call the state of inflation. And we are going to look at three things that explain the state of inflation. So we are going to look at those three that really explain the state of inflation. So the state can either be good or it can be bad. So the first state of inflation is what we call creeping inflation or what they call mild inflation. This is a type of inflation where the general price levels increase at a rate of 10%. And this state of inflation is actually desirable in an economy. 
it does not affect the low income earners neither does it affect the high income the income earners so inflation is increasing at a normal rate and that normal rate we are saying is 10 percent but the moment it goes beyond 10 percent then it takes us to another level which we call moderate inflation for example if it is between 11 and 19 around there that is moderate it is medium so this is where the persistent increase in the general price level proceeds uh, proceed, beyond 10 it goes beyond 10 but does not go beyond 20 percent the moment it proceeds beyond 10 then that type of inflation is moderate it is run away it does not affect so much the poor but on the other hand the poor those who are very poor those who are living below the poverty line are affected the most because as prices increase it means even the standard of living of the people is going to be affected. If you are a low income earner, earning maybe 200,000, and you have been maintaining your standard of living, and all of a sudden the inflation goes up. When inflation goes up, it means even the prices for goods and services are also likely to go high. And as they go high, you have been earning this, it means you are really earning excess to income to survive. Now, if that income is not there, what is going to happen? It means your standard of living is going to be affected negatively. You are not going to, to live that standard of living you have been experiencing all along because of the high rate of inflation. So this type of inflation affects, on the other hand, the poor. Though the rich are not affected so much, but the poor are definitely affected by this type of inflation. But when it comes to mind, the poor are not affected at all. They also live within their means. So that is state number two. State number three is what we call hyper. Hyper means something that is so high. When inflation increases, when the prices increase beyond 20%, we call that one hyperinflation. It has gone beyond what the poor, what the normal people are supposed to experience. The prices increase beyond what the poor can afford. That's what we are calling hyper. Then, if you don't want to call it hyper, you can call it gulping. Meaning that it swallows. If you don't want to call it that, you can call it run away inflation it means it scares away the poor the poor no longer afford what they are supposed to have if it is in terms of food stuffs that means they have to take some food stuffs as a opportunity cost they have to dwell with some of them because of the the high prices which they cannot afford so this type of inflation is not desirable in an economy Remember I say that when it comes to mild inflation, this type of inflation is desirable. People can afford to buy things here and there. But when it comes to the third state of inflation, which we are calling runaway, which we are calling hyper, which we are calling gulpy, that type of inflation is not desirable in an economy at all. Therefore, this type of uh, this state of Inflation discourages many things. Discourages inflation, discourages saving, discourages investment, and so on. So, for the meantime, we are going to stop here. Then we shall come in for the second session. I want you to visit and subscribe to our website so that you are able to view us as we educate the nation. This is the Chariakova James from Namgongo Secondary and Vocational School. Let us meet in the second session. I thank you.